Hey guys, I'm Wanda and welcome to Deep South Homestead. Today Danny and I are going to take you on a tour of both of our high tunnel greenhouses. One of them has a black shade cloth, one has a white shade cloth. They both have different purposes here on our homestead and we're going to show you here, this is the spring of 2021, it's not even April yet, the end of March. Um, what's going on in both of them? So, let's go tour the greenhouses. Look at that. Look at work worms. Look at that. That's a big old boys there. Okay guys, we just tilled up an area right here by Ms. Wanda's greenhouse. This is where we had a raised bed at last year in a pomegranate tree. We took the tree up and extended the bed area out. Uh, we had sweet potatoes here last year. I never did really dig them because it froze on them. And I just chopped them up. They were still in the ground. Uh, big old pieces of them chopped up. They still good sweet potatoes. <laughs> we'll probably find them digging in the future, but uh, we're going to move our spaghetti squash right back here we had such good luck with them last year right here we got five again this year so we're going to try to move them out here and uh, we just amended the soil and we're going to try our best to see if we can't make them produce like they did last year in the same exact spot seemed like it was a good location good morning everybody uh miss wonders done showed you a little bit about what we're fixing to do so i'm going to take you on the tour of the high tunnels Guys, these things are amazing. They have done started off, I'm talking about, even blowing my mind. You know what I mean? Uh, we went ahead on uh, Ms. Wanda's high tunnel here, and I got the electrical hooked up. I want to kind of show you a little bit about that to start with before we actually get into the plants. Okay, first of all, I got all the electricity hooked in here. We got a nice receptacle box hooked up out here. We've got, uh, we, call, <laughs> we call it our airplane fan. The uh, When I turn this baby on, I'm going to let you all listen to it just a second here. Well now guys, that right there, when you get in the green in the high tunnel and it starts getting too hot, you can step outside the door. That's a really quick way to cool off right there because man, it's like a serious wind blown uh, effect. Now the other one here is our, uh, we call these our oscillating fans. There's one on each end of the greenhouse. They're on opposite sides. These are our oscillating fans in the uh, high tunnel here, uh, there's one on opposite sides and what they do is they create a wind swirl in the top of the uh, high tunnel, which helps to control the moisture and our high humidity here. So we have that done. And then we have our lights down through the middle here. Now these particular lights are not grow lights. These are just LEDs, uh, but all of them but this one have a plug in on the lights because I, I have plans in the future for being able to hang grow lights in here uh, down through the middle of it to uh, if we need them. So that is something that's kind of in the future making here in the high tunnel of Ms. Wanda's. I want to start off in the uh, high tunnel here and start showing you some of the vegetables and some of the success that we're having in here. This is just totally amazing. First off, we're going to start off with the onions over here. This just blows my mind with these onions here. I want you guys to look at these onions now. This is my arm down in here. These things are over two feet tall. And look how healthy they are. Oh my gosh, these things are amazing at what's going on here. 
The Lacinato kale here. Look how beautiful. These things have just started kicking it and getting it. Miss Wanda's got a nice pretty flower stuck in amongst them there. I had to have some color. She likes her color. But now I want to come back here and I want to show you these trays. These were potted yesterday. These things were just tiny. They had just reached the four leaf stage and about an inch tall yesterday evening. This morning, they're already this size. Look at the tomato plants after two days in here. I want you guys to look at this. Everybody kept saying, oh, you didn't put enough soil up around the tomatoes. You didn't stem them up enough. You should have put them deeper in the soil. Guys, trust me. I've done this enough. I know what I'm talking about here. When I plant them in the garden, I will bury them somewhat a little deeper. But in here, I've added a little bit more soil around them. Look at these things. They are just amazing growing in this high tunnel. Now, when we come on down here, you'll see... Look at these celebrity hybrids here. Look at these things. Same time, four days, they're already a good six to eight inches tall. The that, that's after plant putting that's, them in these pots. That's after moving them to this from the little hoss tool things. Yes. And look at the spaghetti squash and the regular squash here. Now, the spaghetti squash has already begun to run in four days in this cup. They've already begun to put on runners. We're going to be moving them outside to the place you just saw me till. Our regular squash over here, our gold prize from Hoss Tool, they are getting ready. They got to go in the ground. As soon as this little cool snaps over, we're going to move them, get them in the ground. But Miss Wanda's got right here. She's got one. Is that a That's zoo? a gold prize. Is that a gold prize? I think okay. It's a gold prize. And one over there that's coming up. Right there. I potted these yesterday afternoon. I have the little Hoss Tool, a uh, little uh, 162 uh, cubicle tray thing. And this morning, they've already grown over an inch this morning in these solo cups. This is amazing, guys. Using this system with us, you cut little holes in the bottom of this cup right down here. I take my knife and cut three little holes in it, put water in the tray, sit them down in it. They do fine. Look at Ms. Wanda's beans here this is the purple ones the burgundy the royal i don't know burgundy something the, the packs down there oh let's see i here. was smart enough to leave the pack this you left time the pack here royal burgundy okay now this one right here is something different yeah this is a seed from last year that probably came back up i've got three or four that came up from last year and i forgot what i planted but these are already look look at them now, I'm not sure. Are these supposed to read on that package and see if these are supposed to... That We may be putting some strings. I don't think these are... I thought uh, they were bush beans. These are bush beans, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't know that I can actually read anything here. It doesn't really say. We'll have to do the look. Okay, so we're not sure on this one. But look at them. Look at those beans. Isn't that amazing? I mean, this is just a couple of weeks. Yeah. In the high tunnel. And we will, I mean, if I can keep the bugs out of them. Yep, keeping the bugs out. Of course, we have the two of them. Here's another little tomato here. This is a Cherokee purple. Yes, I right planted here. several. Ms. Wanda. For my Cherokee garden, I got several Cherokee purples. This is one of them. Another one of these little mystery beans that Ms. Wanda planted and don't know what they are. <laughs> then we have the, the beautiful little flowers she put in the corner here. And this is going to be my uh, ginger and turmeric is in this yes. corner. We're just waiting for it to come up. This is our uh, bay leaf tree. We've got to get this tree repotted. We're going to put it in the other greenhouse uh, high tunnel. It's done starting to re-sprout on us. It's getting to be that time. And I want to get it out of this small pot, get it into a larger pot in, in, in my high tunnel and get it out of hers. Okay, Ms. Wanda has her little ivy plant here in the pot here. Just to give a little decoration in hers here. Looks like she's got a Cherokee tan coming up there. Is that what that is? Yep. Okay. She's so got we're, a... my Cherokee garden, this is another part of it. The Cherokee tan will run on this fence. And I have the uh, the uh, uh, Texas Legend onions down through here. This is an experiment in the high tunnel to see how they do. And it looks like they're going to do okay right now. And they're... then I have these plants from last year. Y'all, they look dead, but each one of these house plants... 
Looks like they're trying they're to come, to back, come out. back out. Yep, the freeze killed them, but they're trying to come back out. Now we and move on down. Your hold on, the ferns are starting to come back out. Also, people were amazed at the ferns. Where I chopped all the dead back, and we're going to see if they come out or not. Well, here's your other Cherokee purples. We put them in amongst the onions to try to help deter some of the pests off of them. We're going to see how that works out. Now, we came in yesterday and we put the calcium nitrate to the uh, to the tomato plants here to kind of help give them a little bit of a boost. We had just fertilized the onions real heavy. We've got the, these Cherokee purples, or it looks like they're wanting to take off and do real good in here. We're hoping and praying that they really do good. Now here's another plant. I don't remember what you had here, but it's trying to come back out. We thought the freeze killed it. I think this is one of the mums that was in the front pot. There were several pieces to it, and I just brought it in. The cold, I thought it killed it, but look, they're not dead. <laughs> and our, our black pepper plant that the freeze uh, killed back, look at this. It's starting to re-sprout and come back. It didn't get the roots, so we're happy about that. And the other one. And the one on the other side. Oh, look at the petunia plants taking it over. This is wild petunias. They just come up here. But look. Let's look and see what we got under here. Pepper plants growing too. Oh yeah, the pepper plants coming on. So it's going to be all right. But we're going to leave the petunias because they're just beautiful in oh, here. Oh, petunias are beautiful. They do really well. Now here we have Miss Wanda's Cherokee popcorn. Now this is, we're going to need to come in here and get some uh, ammonium sulfate to this here pretty quick because corn is a heavy ammonia feeder and we want to make sure in the high tunnel here that this uh, popcorn gets every chance that it needs. She's got four rows of it here. We don't plant our stuff real close together because we like to make sure that it gets a really good stalk on it. So we got a little space here. We're trying the popcorn in here. It's the Cherokee Long Ear. White Eagle? No, Cherokee Long Ear Popcorn. Okay. The, the pack's there. But it was an older, I mean, I'd had it for three or four years, so the sporadic spots in it was probably just older seed that did not come up, but overall, I'd say, what, 75 to 80% oh, yeah. germination? To, to me, the age that it was, it all germinated well. 75 uh, to 80%. A good 75% of it, 80%. That's yeah. pretty cool. That, that's really good. All right, this right here, this pot is the Cherokee... Hearts of Bursting Flower. It hasn't came out yet. It's only been in there three or four days. We're going to see what happens if it lives. Is this a Trail of Tears? This is a Trail of Tears. Look okay, at this. Okay, the Cherokee trail, trail of Tears. And I've got three of them planted, and they're up. So that's one of our Cherokee now plants. this is a pole bean, so that's why we spaced them really far apart. Because yeah. uh, with high humidity, uh, you know, you get a lot of... Uh, a lot of powdery mildew with stuff in the south, so we've kind of spaced them way apart so they won't be quite so thick on the fence here. And y'all, I just had to have some color. Isn't those pretty? The only problem with this, when I bring the uh, hose around, it gets up on it and I have to watch. Well, we're working on that. <laughs> we're trying to get some watering system in here. Now we have a few more over here. We have some garlic chives right here. Nope, onion chives. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have onion chives right here. And then I have my... Uh, uh, Texas Legend onions planted in around that. We have another mom stuck in the back back here, looks like. Yeah, that one's coming out finally. And we have uh, four cucumbers here. Now, I don't know what variety you planted. Uh, that was a house tool, but it was... Was it National Pickling? More. more? Something more. More size more. Okay. Or something like that. Uh, and if it does anything like Danny's, four is going to be way more cucumbers than half our family is going to need. Now this looks like a kale you have planted here. It is. is. It's a house tool kale, and I don't remember the name. It's not the... It's not the lacinato. It's not the lacinato. I can look at it and tell that. But look how pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's almost ready to start eating. It is. Another mom sitting right there by it. That looks like what you stuck in there. I did. And then we have the Cherokee yellow wax beans here. Now, again, I've got two or three spots, which might have been my fault for a wet, but I'm fixing to bring in and put more beans, so it'll just give us a variety of times. But look how pretty. Isn't those things beautiful? They are doing so well. They're already putting their little toppers on. We had such success with them last year. And these are Ms. Wanda's radishes that I thinned out for. She has been harvesting them things, and look at that. 
They are doing fantastic up in there. Look at all them radishes. All the red up in there. Woo, them things is good. I've been roasting these things and they are delicious. Now these. So thank you, Angie, for the recipe. These are the watermelon. I'm not sure. I forgot which ones I planted, but they're going to have to come up shortly, and I don't One see radishes. One of them's already bolting. So I'm not sure they're radishes, but I'll have to go back to the video. Okay. Then we've got another flower here. we got another onion that we stuck over here. Onions seem to really... That's the reason we plant our, our bulb onions here, because... Look at that. Look at these onions. Them other ones, boy, they just are cadillac in here. More color. This is my airplane plant. I thought the freezer got it. It's doing okay. Uh, my we have our aloes, uh, aloes two and different our, type. Yep, they're coming back out. The freeze did get a hold of them, but they they're gonna make it. They're gonna be they're all gonna right. Do, they're gonna do fine. All right, guys, we're gonna be moving down to this uh, to the other uh, high tunnel. Now this one here does have the white shade cloth over the top of it. It's an experiment for us. Uh, we do hope now that with the fan system and all that we have, that we can alleviate a lot of the heat that the white is letting in here. We were led to believe that the white would be a lot cooler, which has not been the case. It is actually hotter. <laughs> um, but we're hoping that with these fan systems hooked up now, we're going to be able to alleviate that heat until we can make some changes in the future and go back with a black shade cloth that, uh, that's still the 40% like we have now. So let's move down to the other high tunnel. Let's check and see what's going on in it. Okay, guys, before we go into the second high tunnel, look at the fig tree here. We got this fig tree in between both high tunnels because figs love being protected. And uh, this thing is way ahead of the other one over here. And we're excited now, hoping that, uh, hoping that it does good. Uh, it looks like it's kicking it. We're going to keep it pruned back where it don't get into the high tunnels. Cause that's the beauty of figs you can prune a fig tree back and it still produces every year because it produces on the new growth of it every year not on the old growth so um, we may let that in grow out a little bit over there and plus it's going to provide some shade in here on the ends of these things so that once the hot summer sun begins to beat down uh it'll help keep maybe the green uh the high tones a little bit uh cooler we're hoping so let's go in this one here and see what we got going on now remember, this one is going to mainly be fruit trees and berries and cool season products. We do have a tropical side to it right now, but we hope to, in the future, get a third greenhouse and make a tropical greenhouse out of it and make this one a completely cold-tolerant greenhouse. As we come in here, our dwarf banana tree that we thought the freeze had killed way back actually did not kill it way back and, and that's with no heat in here oh, it, it smells wonderful in here uh, don't you love that smell it smells awesome oh i love that smell from the fruit and the citrus um but uh but the banana tree is doing really good the little ones that we planted in here believe it or not these are the same size trees they were planted at the same time but one yep. outside one, one this one was an outside one we moved inside the uh, high tunnel here Look at the difference in this and this. This is the difference a high tunnel makes. And this one's got a baby coming on here. I so. saw that. So um, we've got that one. And then we've got, uh, we've got more of the Texas Legend onions over here in this one. We're trying to see uh, white versus black shade cloth. Does it make any difference in the onions? These are our strawberries here. We didn't get a chance to move them this year because of the weather, but uh, it looks like they're doing fine. There's lots of lots of young strawberries on them, so we're hoping that um, that we're going to be able to get something off of them. This is the yellow Marconi pepper plants that were like eight feet tall. I cut them back. They are beginning to sprout back out now, right here and here. Someone wanted to know and how here. did you do this, so can you explain right quick what you did to these plants to make them do this? Uh, well, I didn't really do anything. I just come in and cut them back. Cut all everything back? Yeah, I cut everything back to it. I cut it higher than I wanted it because I realized it would probably come out down lower and I'll probably come back and cut this off because this is dyed right here. Yeah. You always cut it a little taller than what you want. And when they sprout out down lower, then you can begin to work with it. Uh, like this one here. See, this one's leafing out really good right here. 
it's, and you it's, could cut it back if I you could wanted. cut it back if I wanted to, but I may just leave it like that because okay, it'll bush out a lot better. Maybe that'll answer some questions. We got a blank spot all over. Yeah, well, I haven't here. planted anything right here yet. I'm letting that just kind of rest right now. And we have our multiplying, this is the old fashioned multiplying onions. They're about ready to go to seed on here. And we have had many, many people ask for us to send some of these. So yeah. if they want them, what time of the year? It will probably be July before they're actually uh where we can actually ship anything if we want to and this year i may try to save the seed from them because there's a lots of seed heads on them popping up here it's a time of the year for them to go to seed and uh so we may be trying to you know save them but look at this they are multiplying out really well now you got to realize there was only one onion planted in each spot in each spot and look at this one here is I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten onions in that one right there. Isn't that awesome? Of course, this here, we we have problems just like a regular garden. You we know, have a few weeds. have a few weeds, but weeding in here is nothing compared to outside. So each one of these has at least three, except for these little ones on the back, and I think mm. we just put some of those back there. Well, we what all happened, had what happened was I had the uh, broccoli in here, and the broccoli shaded that out back there, and those didn't get a really good chance to get a good start. And they're so. coming back out. Yeah, they're coming back but out. But you see how many in each one. I mean, they're really multiplying great. Yeah, these are, now, these are not Egyptian walking onions. So everybody keeps wanting to say that, think that they are. And they're, they're not, not nesting. Or... They're not the nesting onion. They're not bunching onions. This is the old-fashioned multiplying onions. I've had these things over 20 years. Uh, they just... They're the old, old-fashioned ones. And this is what everybody is looking for. So in the future, we do hope to have we some. We do hope to have some that we can actually sell, especially if I can get the seeds off of these and, and, and plant the seeds. I and might those build. little hoss tool kits, I bet you. The little hoss tool kits, hey, it might work. I've learned a new trick on planting seeds. I'm going to try this year, and if it works, you all be the first to see the new trick that I have here. Okay. Now, we'll go backwards on this side right here. We've got our pineapple plants here. I got to get these moved out of here and get them put. Uh, we're going to move these to our greenhouse behind the shop over there uh, because pineapples seem to do really well in that greenhouse. They love the heat. And here we have our uh, red seedless grapes. I can't remember if it was easy red or green. I don't even remember now. They're seedless grapes. They're just seedless grapes. <laughs> you know, it's not the razzmatazz, they're just seedless grapes. We moved them in here because uh, the seedless ones here are so bad about cross-pollinating with uh, muscadines. And they may anyway, but... They, it's possible that they might. And this but, is the other one. Yep, this one is doing well. We it's, started these in the house. They yeah. sent them, and we put them in the house, and they grew, what, a foot in a week Oh, yeah, in within the house. a week, they grew, they grew a foot. Now, what I've done here, now this is something, this is a Danny special... Uh, now, these are Egyptian walking onions right here. I put these in between these muscadines, I mean these grapes here, so that uh, hopefully, if there's any insects or pest problems, the onions will deter that from happening because they give off an odor that is just deter. I put some oh, Egyptian walking onions on this end also, and when I trellis this thing right in here, I'm hoping that uh, the scent of these will confuse any insect that might want to come in here. But now, guys, I want you to go back, if you want to, and watch my high tunnel videos when I did a video about creating chill hours on peach trees in high tunnels. Everybody told me that it would not work, that it would not bloom in here, because it would not get enough chill hours. These trees require uh, five to 600 chill hours, and I made it because I, I, I pushed them into dormancy early and caused them to get the right number of chill hours that they required in the deep south. And, and we're hoping the bees have been in here, so... I mean, look at all of the blooms on these. Now, these are the Dwarf Empress Peaches from Growers Solutions. Now, we have two of them. And they seem to be, last year they had peaches on them last year, and they was only the, it was the first year I planted them, they had peaches. So we're hoping that this year we can keep them pruned back to an adjustable height in here, and, and they're going to do good. We're, we're, we're believing that they are. 
Okay, this is a Heritage Raspberry. We got this from Grower Solutions. It uh, it has began to uh, leaf out really well. And it's a cane one, right? It's a cane one, yes. It's a cane one. We'll have to put a little trellis thing here to hold it up. Uh, and back here, we're noticing we actually have some, looks like marigolds or something coming up in here, uh, which is... <laughs> which is okay. It's okay. Because that's just flowers. You know, we're going to be moving, the, once again, we're going to move this pineapple out of here and use that pot for something else. We got we a couple our, more coming. Yeah, we got a couple more trees coming. Now this is a dwarf blueberry. We have it growing in the uh, high tunnel it's here. It's got some green. It's got some green popping out on it. It's starting to look good. We're excited about that. This is our new kumquat tree that we have in here. This is a citrus tree. And we bought it with the fruit already mm. on it because we just wanted it. I yeah, wanted now well. it's, I wanted it. <laughs> well, Miss Wanda wanted it. We didn't eat the fruit off of it because I looked at the leaves and you can see the leaves have had chemicals sprayed on them. So I told her, I said, we're not going to eat the fruit because they probably have some sort of chemicals on them. And we have the little sticky traps on them for white flies. We're beginning to have a little bit of problem with that. And we're, we're going to let these just, we'll take these off and um, we just want it for decorations yeah, pretty just, much now and eat next year. Uh, this is our Kalamondan orange tree. We have uh, we have it growing. We've got it pruned back and where it can start coming out now because it was just a massive bunch. I actually planted a, uh, a, a, a Egyptian walking onion in there with it. I don't know if it'll make a difference. I put one on each side of the pot. But the white flies, Danny's fixing to use some. I'm fixing to uh, for those. use some uh, horticultural spray on this to try to see if I can't alleviate that problem. This is our Meyer lemon, and look at it; it's already. That's what's smelling. Smell that! Look at that. The Meyer lemon is starting to bloom out everywhere, putting on new leaves. All the old leaves fell off. The bees have been coming in and out, so we should have pollination, or either Danny's going to hand pollinate. I'll have to hand pollinate. We'll have to watch and see. This is our Awari Satsuma. Look the old leaves road. are falling off, and the new leaves are starting to come on. It's awesome. This is our other Kalamondan orange here. It's uh, starting to leaf out really pretty. The old leaves, we've been coming in here hand-picking the old leaves off of them and, and getting them out of here so that it will have time to grow. I pruned it up where it's got a pretty shape to it now. And we've already looked at our banana trees. This one here hadn't quite come back out yet, but it's on its way out. This is another one of our Owari Satsumas here. It's uh, starting to leaf out really good. We'll probably be seeing some blooms popping out on it here before long. Now this was a dwarf Meyer lemon that we got here. And uh, I thought the freeze had killed it. But I noticed it didn't kill the leaves. I've been taking the leaves off of it so that it will cause it to, to come back out. It'll start sprouting. See there? So we wanted a dwarf Meyer lemon in here. We've got that going on. And we have a Hamlin sweet orange here. This is what smells too. Yeah, you can, Woo, you can when smell you open that. the door, you smell between the and lemon. It's got, now, I don't know whether they'll stay on it or not, but it's got some little oranges right here on it. Several of them. Now, they may fall off. I don't know. It might have been too cool on it. We'll see. We will see. Of course, here we have our Fuji apples. We have three of them growing right here together. We have a Colomer apple coming. If it ever gets here from Shumways, it's, uh, we're going to be adding that to the, uh, to the mix right across from it right here when we take the pineapple out as a cross-pollinator for this. We have our banana pepper made it through that hard freeze, guys. It didn't even kill that banana pepper. We cut it back, or Ms. Wanda did. And I had one or two banana peppers off of it right before the freeze, and now it's coming back out again. And this thing's going to bush out thick at the bottom, looks yeah. like. Yeah, so we're going to have banana peppers early. Now, these are not dwarf peaches. These are the Red Havens. Uh, I was told that if I keep them pruned back, that, uh, that I could do the same thing with them. The company told me, said, just keep them pruned back, and they'll do... And guys, they're blooming this, they're blooming too. So I've got three red havens here. Hopefully we're going to be able to get a few peaches off of them to compare to the empress peach, which is right beside it right there. And we have a little bit of, uh, that really looks like spearmint. It's a type of mint, yeah. Yeah, it, um, let me see me. I can tell you here pretty quick. It, uh, yes, that's spearmint. I thought it was. I yeah. put two or three different types of mint. In yeah, here. that's a spearmint there. And then here we have a Santa Rosa plum right here. We're going to try to keep this in the uh, high tone, keep it pruned back, try to grow some fruit in here on that. 
we have another plum tree coming that we're going to put in the pot right beside it here to kind of cross pollinate with once again from shimways if it ever gets here and then we have what this guys we're trying this this is called a sweet southern cherry this is a barbado cherry um we're going to just wanted it <laughs> well uh in, the information said if i keep it pruned back it can just make a little round tree and it will bear cherries for the deep south so we're actually excited to see if that actually does okay we're gonna you know? try it nothing like trying and then we have more egyptian walking onions here uh hopefully in the future we'll have these to maybe sell uh, if somebody wanted some egyptian walking onions i'll see we're gonna see how they do Ms. Wanda, Wanda's high tunnel done fantastic. Now hers was in the gar in the raised bed in the ground. These are in containers, so we're going to see container versus in the ground what the differences are. Now over here we have some more onions with a petunia right in the midst of them. But ain't it pretty? Isn't it beautiful? But look how these in the ground. Look how these onions in the ground in the high tunnel are doing. These things are fantastic. They're so doing like mine. They're doing just crazy. like. Now that's just weeds that need. Yeah, to that's just we just ain't weeded that. But um, over here, this was your pepper trees. This was the pepper trees I had here last year. This was the uh, this was a uh, California Wonder bell pepper. I see it starting to put on new little sprouts up at all these knobs. This one's already started its leaves. This is a California bell pepper. This one is a red roaster. I'm almost positive yeah. that it was. And it's and coming it's, out. It's coming back out. So we're going to get the second year out of these things. Looks like, guys. But look at this. Look at this here. This is the Freedom Blackberries. Uh, these came from... I can't remember if it was Grower Solutions or Gurney's. One of the two. One of the two we got them from. Uh, this thing is loaded with... I mean, it actually already has berries on it. Danny built his trellis system. Yeah, don't laugh at my trellis system. This is some of my tomato sticks I took and... But look, all kinds of blooms. We took them out of the pots and put them over here in the actual ground where we had more room to build a trellis system over here. Look at the berries already on it. This is why we like our high tone is because... We get so much earlier start with stuff here. I mean, it's it's like... This is just amazing. I mean, look at this. These things are doing so good. Um, so we're Guys, we're I want two or three more of these high tones. You know what I mean? Because it's just... Just something to play with well, anyway. <laughs> food does so much better in them, you know? I mean, it, you can't argue with the results. Danny's bloated well, out of the water. There's no maintenance. I mean, you come in here... You know, you gotta, you just do this right here. All right, now you gotta watch, because one to put ginger right here. I know, but you do this right here. You see the green? That's ginger. Look, and I mean, look how up. fast weeding is, you know? This is nothing like, it's nothing like a garden outside. Yeah, and then one to put ginger right here. I think there's a couple of gingers right there where you put the little sticks yeah. at. Yeah, so we, we would have some, because you don't want to just waste all this space. No. So we're going to be putting stuff, but look at this. Now this is elephant garlic on the outside edges texas legend bulbing onions in the middle and guys i can't argue with this i mean look at this they're this beautiful is i mean this is great i mean talk about weeding you just come in here look at this no time at all you can run through this thing and once you keep pulling weeds out of this before long it gets like there's just no weeds you know, because you've pulled out most of the seeds. And then you, then we get down here, and I, and I can, you can, you see this right here? Look at the tops of these stems. Eat off, eat off, eat off, eat off, eat off. You know what happens here? Ms. Wanda lives in the greenhouse down here. She comes down here and she goes, oh, look at this asparagus right here. Snap. And she eats it. It's not animals, guys. It's not animals. And there's and another look, back I'm letting there. some go to fern. Yeah. It's okay. You have to in order to uh, get the root but system. But look at this. That's just good eating right there. Now, see, we were told that asparagus right would not work in the high tunnel because it would be too hot and it would never work. But and that's guys, our parsley. Oh, Let me look just at that. That parsley is beautiful. That's and that's two-year-old parsley. Yeah, that's flat leaf Italian parsley from last year. That stuff is fantastic. But asparagus did wonderful last year. 
Yep. So far, I've done harvested, like I said, probably get close to a dozen uh, spears out of here. And more coming on. And more coming up. Yeah, we were told that it wouldn't work, but I beg to differ with anybody now. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. Okay, guys, so um, I hope today that you've enjoyed seeing the differences between the two different high tunnels. Uh, this one has the black shade cloth on it, 40%. Uh, has worked out perfect in here. It's nice and cool this morning out here. Uh, it's doing really good. So I hope that maybe the things that we're showing you can help you to understand the uh, the urgency of providing your own food and the necessity of a high tunnel. Now there's a difference in a greenhouse and a high tunnel. Uh, we couldn't do greenhouses here because they get too hot. They're just too low. We needed something with a very high top and, and you know the very high top you know lets the heat get up now mine has the fans in them the oscillating fans i have a fan on the end to pull the heat out mine has gel filled openers that open when the heat gets up to 87 degrees in here they automatically open up uh, no electricity required in doing it that is one of the beauties of it i think that um I think that it's going to work out really well here for us. Uh, guys, we have a regular greenhouse on the back of our barn, and it just stays too hot. <clears throat> That's why we're moving all the pineapples over there. The pineapples love that heat. And uh, so that, that means we can put them in there and just leave them in there. And there's an automatic watering system over there. Uh, we got grow lights in there. We have everything in that one, uh, seed start and tray racks, all that stuff in that one. It works out really good for a lot for some things but not for this type stuff not summertime growing not summertime growing nope not at all so guys i guess that's about all i can tell you about the high tunnels right now is there's i can talk about it all day long but showing you the results i think is better than sitting and listening to someone just talk about them uh, that is our desire is to show the results, not just talk about them. So stay with us. We have more coming up about the high tunnels in the future. And watch us as we grow, grow, grow. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. These babies are cadillac -ing. I'm putting them on the top edge up here so that... Uh, They've got all this area down in here to run down. Look at that. That's a pretty plant. It looks like it's ready to bloom. Now this thing's been in this solo cup for four days from the Hoss tool thing. Look at this here. Already through the bottom. Look at that. Four days. Four days. That's Schultz potting soil with the nine month uh, fertilizer in it. I think I dug my hole a little bit deep. Put a little dirt back in there. There we go. That looks a lot better. Lay it down here. Press it down in there. We've got some rain coming on the way, so we're not worried about watering it in. 